guys very cool and welcome to the stream i see we already have mick purple code and cs fox in here i'm very happy about that that's very cool i'm glad you guys made it and we have chromie as well very cool all new faces here so you guys are like crazy animals about the zipline feature you really want it so i think i'm just going to go ahead and make it today um my plan was to work on uh, I suppose, I mean, it's pretty much done, so I was gonna work on submitting it to Oculus, which would be ooh, through these guys. Okay, cool, Fox and VR. Yeah, yeah, I figured through the McPurple, I obviously could guess, Code, I could guess. Chromie, I'm not. We, Chromie, are you in the Discord? I don't know if I, I've talked to you yet. Um, and then CS Fox, I probably could have guessed. Uh, but basically, there's this process where we have to go through, we have to submit it to App Lab. And we, have, we basically have to make a bunch of assets, a bunch of pictures. But I instead I'm going to do the zip lining. But let me show you guys what I have real quick. The zip lining shouldn't be too hard um, if I've coded everything correctly. And let me know if you guys have any questions about any of this. Sorry, it's just all turning on. Okay, cool. So when you start in, you have these little controls. Um, if you press the menu button, you can start a game, which I'll show you in a second. But for right now, you can shoot these webs, you can drop them, sort of jump off, get a nice swing in. Let me pull that one to get around this building. Jump. So you guys can't see it, but the sound design actually really makes it in this game. It's actually really hard to swing. You guys would be surprised how much practice uh, that it's taken to even swing this well. Ah! Oh, I guess I'm going this way. But... Overall... But overall, it's a pretty good time. And let me... Oh, I didn't realize I had maximize on play. Yeah, so, okay, by ziplining, what I basically mean is that you can build... I didn't show you guys that part. You guys probably saw it in the Tech Talk, but I guess I'll just show you guys real quick just to get you up to speed. Mm-hmm, this kind of, the spawning is kind of broken, so you start falling and then you land here. Okay, so for instance, if I wanted to stand here and shoot that, and then take this and throw it, oh, I missed. Now too high, and eh, too low. <clears throat> okay, and then if I wanted to come over here and grab this, I can climb along it, but I can't like zip line down to that, so I think it'd be really cool if I was able to. It might prove more difficult than I'm thinking, but I think I know what the algorithm would be to make that happen. It should be fairly easy. Or at least that's my hope. So we'll see. The only thing I don't know is how I'm gonna get access to whatever strand it is that you're holding. Yeah. Yeah. But that stuff's pretty fun. Woo. Yeah, and you can build webs and stuff. I think you guys saw that too. So that's pretty cool as well. Shoop. I don't know what it's useful for, but it sure is fun. Okay, cool. So let's see here. And if you guys have any questions about that, let me know. Okay, so to zip line, we basically need to ask ourselves how we're gonna change the climb script. Climbing script handles climbing. It's really just a bunch of math. Nothing crazy about it, though. When do you plan to release it? I am probably going to release it... Um, well, so this is day 18 out of 20, so it should be finished in three days. And then from there, playtesters will be able to get their hands on it. When Oculus approves it is when it'll technically be released, but they take like six weeks to do that. Um, lesson learned. Yeah, lesson learned. I should have just... Um, submitted it right as I started making the game. That way they'd approve it, and then there would only be like two weeks left before I was done. Okay, move player of hand does displacement.
Okay, so I think this might be a problem. I think this will interfere with it, but we'll just go ahead. Basically the way I'm moving the player when they're hand, so you grab the wall, then I check how far your hand moves, and then I just move the player in the opposite direction, and that's how they climb. Um, I think this is gonna interfere, but let's just think about this. Hey Pickles, thanks for joining. Will this game be on Steam or Oculus or? It'll be on Quest 1 and Quest 2 when it releases. It will not be on Steam, at least not at release. If it's popular enough, maybe. Okay, so where would this go? Let's take a look at this. What functions do I have in here? Basically where they grab the wall, where they let go of the wall, where a slide ends, and then the update. So that's nothing crazy. I imagine in fixed updates, if they're grabbing a wall, Yeah, I have considered adding multiplayer, but it's basically that would take me a very long time. It would take me longer than I have. So I need to, what, I'm, what I kind of want to do after this game or after the next one is work on creating a multiplayer sort of framework. And that will basically allow me to add multiplayer very easily to games um, that I know is already tested and so I don't have to worry about it. But right now I don't have anything like that, so I'd need to find someone to test with. So it'd be a little... It'd be a little too much for me. Although yes, I of course like adding multiplayer is is uh, always on the mind because it's very fun. If they're grabbing a web, check the thumbstick. If they're grabbing a web, check the thumbstick. Project that. World space dir on, and then project that world space direction on the current thread. Then move along. Then add force along that direction. So there's a few components to that. Does anyone in here have any computer science uh, background or knowledge? If they're grabbing a web. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is basically create something that tells me if they're grabbing a web. So I would imagine we'll go into attempt wall grab. If climb ball check hitting wall and hand state is not equal to swinging, they grabbed. So let's go into climb ball. And this is basically saying building or silk, but let me check that real quick. I wish I never knew it was this complex. It's actually not as complex as you'd think, Pickles. I will explain in a second why I say that. Okay, yeah, so I have a silk layer and a... So I have a silk layer and I have a building layer. So it would be nice if this outputted a... out int layer okay out int layer hit yeah so you're seeing a lot of stuff but really it has only three and this is for you pickles you're seeing because we have time so i can explain some stuff you're seeing a lot of stuff but there's really only a few things that actually happen in code one you have variables so you can basically create something let's say if i want a number it's called an int so I say, hey, this is an int, I name it x, and I give it the value six. So that's creating a variable. Then you can use variables. So now when I write x, it basically is the same as writing the number six. Then if I want to, let's say in here, use that to do math, I could say another number, y, equals x times five. So now y, x will look up this, which is six. 
the multiplication will multiply it by 5 and it'll store it in y. So this will just end up giving you 30 because 6 times 5 is 30. And then so basically you have those two things and then you have functions which are these and they just bundle up a bunch of code that's like this. So if you look at it, this was just a fun <clears throat> sorry, this is just a variable just like x and I'm setting it to transform dot position. Grab normal is the same as x. I'm setting it to this. Then I do some math and I just I'm basically just setting values. When will it be free? Um, it will always be free, but it will always be free and it will come out in about six weeks maybe, unless you're a play tester, which you of course could be. Okay, so let's go back to climb ball, which is basically the, it's like a ball that follows your hand around and lets you know if you're hitting a wall. That way if you put your hand, because in VR, you can't stop someone's hand from going into a wall. So I'm just checking if a ball that I know can't go into the wall is against the wall. And that will tell me if their hand is in it because that ball is trying to follow their hand. Okay, and okay, let's see here. So I actually have to change this just a little bit. We'll change this to building layer. I'm just changing the name so that it makes more sense to me. And then the other one is 14 int silk layer equals this. Okay, so now I have these two layers instead of the one. And then I'm going to basically say bool hit something equals false. Hit something equals false. And a boolean is just a true or false value. We'll be on app uh, you said that I could play test super monkey ball, right? Yeah, awesome AP or but yes, you can. And hey, Chicky, glad you joined. This is super cool, or that is super cool. Hi. Yeah, and if you want to get started with programming in the Discord, there's a channel um, that says how to get started with games. Let me check these out real quick. We'll be on Apple Live, saw this on TikTok, and really like the idea. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Mr. Avocado. How would you become a play tester for this game? Uh, if you join the Discord, uh, I believe a link to that is in the description of this video. There's kind of instructions there or someone in there could tell you how to do it. How could you become a play tester? Is AppLab easy to do on Quest? AppLab is extremely easy to do. Yeah, they, um, they only have a few requirements and they're called VRCs and there's only like six of them and they take about an hour to implement. So it's not nothing too bad, but yeah, anybody could do that. Okay, cool. So basically to figure out if I hit a building or if I hit silk, I need to now split these up into two different layers and I'm going to check twice instead of doing, which is one check. And so basically I'll say you hit something equals false, hit something equals false. And then I'm going to say hit something equals, I guess is or equals a thing. Hit something equals hit something or physics. I don't know why I'm writing that out again. I also don't know why I'm doing it this way. It should be like that. Okay, cool. So that's the ones for the that's the ones for the building. And I think I'm actually going to have the building take precedence over the. And then, okay, so hit something is false, hit something is, hit something or silk layer. And then hit something is, hit something or building layer. So basically that's just saying, um, you check against these two layers and make sure that if any of those are true, that it return, hit something ends up being true. So then just run Discord, awesome chicky. I'm glad to have you there. Click the link in the description. How do I get on Discord? Yeah, okay, that's the Discord. Just join Discord. Very cool. Okay, so we've hit something. Then now we need to figure out how to output that layer. And that will basically be after this one. 
if if hit something is now true, it means that you hit silk. So then set layer hit equals to six, or sorry, 14. Okay, and then basically after that, if you hit the building, layer hit will be six. Very cool, and then you basically are gonna return hit something. Okay, so that should be good now. So basically now we have a function that Okay, so that would be set up. This will be the actual ray casting and then you'll actually return. Okay, so now we basically have a function that checks if it is hitting a wall, this climb ball, and also tells us what it hit. So that's cool. So now if we go back and we go to our attempt wall grab here, int layer hit, and we give it out layer hit, now we can actually get a value out of that. So basically now it's going to say like, hey, if you actually hit something and you're not swinging, um, jump in here and then very cool. Set the grab position and grab normal. Turn off the player's gravity. Set the player's slide velocity. Let others know. Grab the wall. What do the different colors in the code mean? Yeah, so how did you learn game development? Nice, Sam, join the Discord. Okay, so how did I learn game development? I actually learned it on my own. I went to Georgia Tech. It's a college in Georgia. It's a pretty good college. It's great for computer science. The problem is that it was not great for games, so I actually had to teach myself. Um, so I actually had to teach myself all of this stuff. However, they did teach me how to program and I'm grateful to them for that. Um, what to do with the different colors. Hey, AW, glad you're here. Always good to see a new face. We got Chicky Pickle, CS Fox, and uh, other people who I'm not, I can't see. But what do the different colors in the code mean? Yes, good question. Basically, yellow means that it is a function. And when I say a function, if you recall, you were able to say like int x equals five, and that's how you stored this number five, which is just a number, everybody understands the number five, into this value x. So now every time I write x, I'm basically writing the number five. These yellow ones are functions. And so every time, basically I'm doing the same thing I did with x, except I'm storing a bunch of code in it. I'm storing this code. So basically, I'm establishing that there is a variable called attempt wall grab that I could, for instance, call up here. And what that's doing when I write this is it's actually running all this code, everything that's within the brackets. So the yellow is basically for functions. They're just a bunch of code that you have bundled up. And the blue, those are keywords. They tell you what things are. And red, I guess, is for if statements. Yeah, I won't go too much into keywords or anything like that, but functions and variables. Okay, very cool. Hmm. Okay, cool. So now we know what we hit. That doesn't necessarily help us though, because we know what we hit, but I need to know, no, it's not terrible. How does the update go? Fixed update is called every game frame. So when people say my game runs at 144 hertz or like frames per second, what they mean is it, what they mean is basically that this is called 144 times a second. Okay. So if you're grabbing a wall, okay. So I think I probably need to, I think I can probably just put this out here layer grabbed and then I think I can actually just pass this in there will feature be added to where you, you web zip a building you can jump off like PS4 
I've actually have not, I don't know if they're updating that game. When I played it, it really didn't have any features. So I don't know what the web zipping thing is all about. When you web zip a building, you can jump off. Like you can jump off buildings. You can web zip things. I'm not sure. So you would download by plugging your quest into the computer. Um, no, you would, you basically will get an, e it's basically a link you go to here. Let me show you guys real quick ablabdb.com. So here's a bunch of games. Oh, here's Gorilla Tag. People really like it. This is a really good one as well. So if I wanted Gorilla Tag, it is a free game. I would click on it. It says it's available through App Lab. I say, okay, cool. I'm actually <laughs> so funny. I can appreciate a good game when I see it. So ridiculous. Oh my God, this is so ridiculous. Actually, I'll probably play that later. Okay, and then you click free, I get it. It's now purchased, and then basically when I go into my Oculus mobile app or my um, Oculus headset, it will now be in there. Which I don't think I can show you guys, but. This was also made, yeah, it looks like he did a good job. That's funny, good for that person. Okay, layer grabbed, fixed update, basically blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna say like, if layer grabbed, if layer grabbed equals 14, which will be the silk, equals 14, then we're gonna wanna do some stuff. So now I'm basically saying every frame, if they have grabbed silk, I wanna do something. If they're grabbing a web, check the thumbstick. Okay, so I need to go up into enable and I need to basically add these things in here. Dot right, uh, well actually it doesn't matter what hand it is. Let's see, so you're climbing a web, you grab it you move with the left stick, so I'm gonna use that. If you grab it with your left hand, that's simple enough. You just turn your hand and it will... I guess I need to decide what the controls will be like because on one thought, maybe I could do where you're looking and then you just press forward and backward. But that feels a little weird. I think it would be cooler. I think it would definitely be cooler if it was sort of like um, your analog stick was projected along the rope. So if your rope is going this way and you were grabbing it like this and then you moved your thumb to the right, you would slide that way. And if you moved it to the left, you would slide that way. But if you turned your hand and then moved it forward, you would still slide that way. The only problem is that if you're grabbing with your right hand and I do this, then that doesn't really work. But I guess it pretty much kind of still does. Uh, let's see, get over 100 people in the Discord now, party. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I changed some things on the TikTok to make it more obvious that they should join the Discord. Um, the game development community for VR is growing and that is very good so we can get more high quality games from big and small studios alike. I totally agree with that. You should stream Gorilla Tag later, it's so funny to watch. I don't actually don't know how to stream VR games. I was thinking about streaming normal games. Okay, so it doesn't matter what hand it is, so we'll do XR controller input dot left axis left primary axis, I believe will be I don't know what the secondary axis is, but let's go left primary axis. I think I have um Snap turn, what is it? What is it? Right primary axis. Okay, cool. Zip along web. Zip along silk, actually. Okay, and then on disable, we'll get rid of that. 
basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying like, hey, when they have controller input, go ahead and call this function. And if you recall, a function is just a way for me to, um, a function is just a way for me to bundle up some code. So I'm going to do that now. It's going to be called void zip along silk. And it actually is not going to work because it needs to take in a vector to vec. Cool. Okay, so that's all good. So now I am in control of the analog stick. If they're grabbing silk, move along it. Okay. No, we'll not have full body tracking. I, um, and in fact, nothing has full body tracking. I would need access to their cameras and then I would need to write my own machine learning algorithm to do that which is certainly possible, but when making a game in a month, not so much. I, and actually I don't even think they give you access to the cameras, let me check. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's why they wouldn't do it because you'd have access to the person's home. Yeah, it's a privacy issue, so I can't do that myself. They'd have to... You're excited to become the silkworm, is what you meant to say. <laughs> I'm trying to keep them different so that I don't get them sued as hard as possible. Okay. If they're grabbing silk, move it along. Okay, and this vector too. So then basically we are going to... So actually we are not going to put this in here. We're going to move that over here. In case they slide off the wall, if... Int throw away. Okay, because I don't need that, so it doesn't matter. And we need it right out here. Very cool. Uh, la 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 la. So then, we also will want to check that they're actually grabbing a wall. So, if that and oh my bad. Okay, so basically if they're grabbing silk and they're grabbing a wall, then I need to figure out their, let's see. Yes, about a month. There you go, you wanna become the silkworm, very nice. Okay, so my next problem in this coding, cause now we know like, okay, they're grabbing the silk and there we have access to the analog stick. My next problem is that I need to figure out what web they're grabbing. I need to figure out what web they're grabbing. When I create a web, yeah, it'll be free. It's supposed to just be a nice little experience for you guys. You'll probably play it for like, well, actually, I'd play it a lot. I would expect like maybe two hours, three, four, five. Um, but it's just supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be anything crazy. Let me check how this actually happens here. Okay, so you shoot that, you get rid of it. I took my headset off so that I can look at it. If you look here in the scene, there is a silk or actually it's this and there's this capsule collider on it and I basically what I want access to I suppose is the silk strand so when I grab this object it uses this okay 
Yeah, I think the city's gonna be fun. And, um, no, I mean, how much money did it cost to make the game? It did not cost me any money except my time. And if you figure I work for some amount of pay an hour, I've put a hundred hours in, probably like a few thousand dollars, I guess. Okay, so let's go back here to climb. Don't really need help, I'm trying to download it again, but it's telling me installation aborted when I try to delete that unit. It says that it doesn't exist, so I can't delete it. Alright, Code, I'm going to have to help you after the stream, unfortunately. I can't help you right now, but I do feel for you, that sucks. I do not get any money from them, no, I'm just starting out. Climb ball. So let's see here. Okay, so if we know that we hit... Sorry guys, I'm just looking for how I would do this real quick. I don't actually have a full-time job right now. That's how I have time to do these things. I do not have a full-time job because I would like to be a full-time uh, streamer, game developer, just kind of all of that. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is make a fun community where people learn to make games and then I make games and they play them and then I can make better games because I have more people in the community and then it just kind of grows itself like that. Um, that would be the dream for me, I think. Ultimately, if possible, I would be this guy from Sword Art Online. And, sorry, not the creator. And, yeah, never mind, never mind. But basically, he creates this, like, crazy VR world, and I think that would be really cool. What are you, full-time job? You deserve it. You could be a full-time dev with how good you are now. Yeah, no, I could. I mean, surely I could go work anywhere I wanted. That would be fine. Not like it would be crazy easy, but if I studied, I could certainly pass the interviews. I just uh, don't want to. It's really not my thing to work for somebody, I'll say. And thank you so much for the compliments. 3 Eyed Gamer, yo, what's up? I'm coming from your TikTok in the Silk Room. Looks like a crazy game. Hey, 3 Eyed Gamer, I'm glad you think it's fun. Or I'm glad you think it looks fun. Hopefully uh, you enjoy it when it comes out. So I need to do a... Okay, so I would actually like to return. I'm just trying to figure out how to pass, basically to pass back the fact that I'm hitting a, I need to tell them like what they're, what you're grabbing. I need to give them the silk strand. And the only way to do that is when I grab it, I believe. I could create a separate function, certainly, and call it. Check what it, grab the object that they've grabbed, public, um, just grab the silk strand, gotta go, be back in 30 minutes, alright, I'll see you CS Fox, thanks for coming, or I'll see you in 30 minutes anyway, 
Oh, without a doubt it will. Okay, I'm sorry guys, the comments are coming a little too fast. I guess I'm that kind of streamer now. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to being able to read all of them as they're coming in. Let's see. Public silk strand. Get silk strand. Okay, very cool. Sorry, and I'm kind of in the zone right here as far as what I'm doing. So you'll just have to give me a second. I'm pretty much gonna copy this for the most part. Put it in here. There's no layer hit. There's silk layer. And we basically want to say return overlap sphere so we need to check what they're hitting first okay cool and then we need to return calls at zero which is basically just the first one dot transform dot root dot get components silk strand okay so you see what I did there I basically said like hey for all the silks get all the silks that it's hitting and then return the first one which is what the zero does and then grab the silk strand off of it so that's cool so then if we come back here we can say set silk strand if that's what was hit if Okay, and then we'll basically say m silk grabbed equals fall, uh, sorry, equals fall, so equals null. And then we'll say if, um, so basically every time you grab, it'll reset what silk you've grabbed, and then it'll say, uh, if m layer grabbed equals 14, M silk grabbed equals, and remember we created that. Remember we created that function, get silk strand. Very cool, so we've got that. Let me take a second to look at these. You're popular, yeah, apparently I am popular, who knew? <laughs> you know, it only took a couple of TikToks, I guess. Uh, la 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 la, once you realize everyone you are, this hopefully rolls your YouTube forward, okay, oh, I doubt it will. Without a doubt it will. Okay, very cool. Chicky, check out the pinned messages in the Discord. Thanks, Jake, for helping out with that. No, no, so Pickles, this is, um, so it's actually about a silkworm. It's not really like a human silk, I guess it's kind of a human silkworm, but he doesn't live in a city or anything. He lives in a very bad looking, <laughs> he lives in a very bad looking, let me see sort of rocky version of a city, um, which is nothing crazy, it's just rocks. I tried to make it green to make it more like foresty, but it looked really bad. It looked like mustard or something, so I just kind of got rid of it. And these rocks look good enough. And hey, that one guy, glad you could make it. There's also another game able to test out silkworm. Um, we got a whole bunch of people in here, pretty exciting stuff, and currently we're making zip lining. So you guys keep asking for it, so I'm just going to go ahead and appease you guys. You guys are crazy animals for that. You guys are rabid. You guys are rabid for the zip lining. Let's see. <laughs> uh, so grabbed equals null. And then, okay, so now this will be set, and that's good, but that actually... Okay, so now if you think back on what we've done, we basically have said, okay, when they're pressing the analog stick, do this. If they are grabbing silk and they're grabbing the wall... And then I'll hide another one here now that says and m silk grabbed is not equal to null. And they've grabbed, and we actually have access to the silk. Okay, so now we have all that. And so now basically, 
we need another thing. Okay, so we need to vector three, we need to basically, so here's where the math is gonna come in on this one, guys. We need to basically, they have a controller. You know, normally I probably should be in Photoshop drawing this for you guys, but I'm not gonna do it. You basically have a silk strand, let's imagine it right here. You have a controller, you have an analog stick, and that's gonna give me the X value of the analog stick and the Y value. So like how far in the X direction they're pushing it and how far in the Y direction they're pushing it. So basically I'm gonna take that little 2D arrow, which is basically an arrow, and I'm gonna like print it onto the silk strand. So if they're pushing to the right, it'll print it on the right. And if they're pushing to the left, it'll print it on the left. And if they're pushing forward, it'll kind of just be a tiny arrow to the right or a tiny to the left or whatever. Um, and then I'm gonna move them in that direction. So we need to do the printing here. So first we're gonna grab the actual um, axis vec equals new vector three vec dot x zero vec dot, ooh, la, vec dot z. What is the other game? Um, BRB, thanks, what is the other game? We might hit 10, we might hit 10 people watching today, that would be sick. Okay, cool. Uh, the other game is called Awesome Ape Orb, it is also in the Discord. And that is not correct. Okay, so we have this, and now we basically need to take this and... Uh, la, 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 la. Transform hand trans equals equals um, hand type hand type equals hand type dot left. Okay, so basically, if this is the left hand, then just go ahead and make it hand spy dot left hand trans. If it is not, make it hand spy dot right hand. Wait, no, it's just always the left hand trans. Yeah, okay, never mind. Let's get rid of that, because maybe I'm wrong and maybe we'll need it, but basically now we'll want to transform this vector which is local to the hand to an, a world space vector which is going to be local to the world and if you guys need any explanation on that hey connors um i don't know if you saw connors but we had a pretty good day on tiktok so we got some people in here they're excited about the game toast i don't believe is in here yet okay vector three world axis vec equals uh, hands spy dot left hand trans. Dot transform. Transform direction transforms direction from local space to world space. Transform the direction of the local space vector. So now we have that analog stick, but in world space. So if they turn their hand this way and push to the right, it'll be that way. Um, so that should be good. And then we basically need to project that onto the silk. So that's what we don't have yet. Holy crap, we got 12 people on here. Sorry, I'm kidding. That's actually very like casual for me and that happens to me a lot, so. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hey everybody, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you guys are excited about the game. Currently we're working on getting zip lining in. Um, so that should be cool. And it's been a hot second, so I'll just tell you guys what I mean. Hey Toast, I'm glad you're here. Why don't you download a free non-copyright city map? Ah, uh, this is free and not copyrighted. So no worries there.
Okay, cool. So you guys have basically seen this. You can, you know, you can swing along. Pretty nice. Can kind of readjust your swing there. If I wanted to zip line to over there, well, actually, is this a good place for it? Maybe I can get over there. Okay, so if I wanted to do something like this, yeah. Oh no, I pulled myself. Dang it. All right, let's see. I'm trying to create a zip line here for you guys. Huh. Well, I guess I didn't have zip lining before, so I didn't consider that when you tried to place the web or place the zip line that it would, uh, It would make it hard for you. But anyway, case in point, I'd like it if I could grab this here and then slide along it as opposed to having to climb it. Ah. So let's get back to it. <laughs> yeah, Connors. Connors has been here for a little bit. Let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. So cool. Hey, no fighting in the stream. Okay, cool. So now we basically need to, we have the world access vector and we need to get a, what would it be exactly? I guess we can just do silk grabbed. Okay, so I think each I guess to slide along it, it's gonna have to have two nodes. So let's take the silk nodes from it. Let's do m silk grabbed dot silk. Okay, yeah, so it's not public. So we need to go in here. And when I say it's not public, what I mean is that I can't access it from other scripts, but I can make it accessible by making it public. Mm hmm and then I think I can actually get rid of this and just do get private set, which basically means that in this script here, dang it, that basically just means that in this script here, I can add to silk notes. Silk notes is just a list of items, like any other list, like a shopping list or something like that. Um, and I'm basically just saying only in this script can you add to that list and in other scripts you can read from the list but you can't add anything. So now this should be accessible. So I say self nodes and I say, okay, vector three, silk dir for silk direction equals. And if you guys had watched my math video, which nobody really watched, but that's okay because it makes a lot of sense why nobody would watch that. Silk grab dot silk nodes. Um, you'd see that this is actually a pretty powerful function here. Or this is one of the things that I talked about and I use it a lot. Okay, and so basically I'm taking the two ends of the silk node I don't believe this is actually going to change. So 
So maybe let's set that because I think that's going to generate some garbage actually. Temp, I've managed to install it now. What unit even? All right, good. I'm glad. What was the problem code? Got a dip, I drive home for work. Uh, let's see. Yeah, code, what did the problem end up being? Okay, so if you grab that layer, and then we'll have another one called the vector three M silkter. Basically, I only need to set this once, I believe. I shouldn't need to set it every frame, so m soaker equals m soak grabbed dot soak nodes dot one dot transform dot position minus so when you take two positions and you subtract one from the other you're basically saying i want a arrow that points from this one to this one basically from the second vector to the first one. So now this will give me, if I have a, if I shoot silk and it's attached here and it's attached here, it's gonna give me an arrow that points in between them like this. And the way that you do that is where you take this one and you subtract this one. And if I wanted the opposite, if I wanted one that points this direction, or like a line and a direction that points this direction, I would take this one and I would subtract this one. So that's how that works. And that's what I'm doing here with that subtraction. And I'm gonna go ahead and normalize it, which means I want it to have a length of one because that could be a length of anything right there. Not that it matters actually, but whatever. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh no, I'm gonna sneeze. I broke my spine a few weeks ago, so now when I sneeze, it hurts a lot. Okay, I went away. Zip. Huh, what's happening? Where was I just a second ago? Attempt grab. Okay, cool. So now we don't need that. We have this world access direction and now we're gonna get another one and we're gonna call it vector three. Vector three. Uh, la, 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 la. Projected axis equals vector three dot project. I believe we'll want to do it this way. And it will basically be world access vec onto uh, world access vec onto m silk dir, which is that direction. So now I'm basically projecting the access onto um, the direction that the silk is moving. And that will tell us where we need to go. Okay, and then we'll do player spy dot rb plus uh, dot add force along the projected axis times. Uh, for now, let's just multiply it by 500 and let's see if we can get this to work in any sort of way. How did I break my spine? I was trying to do a backflip. I have done backflips before. However, I did not land this one. I was trying a new move actually. It's called the backflip to headsy where you do a backflip and you land on your head. Um, and I actually landed it perfectly. But uh, no, it's just a joke. I, I landed on my head and destroyed my spine. It was extremely painful. Although not too bad, honestly. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, it was all right. It hurt for a, a second. Well, it, it only scared me because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to walk. Cause I hit, I hit so hard that when I hit the ground, my first thought wasn't like, oh, I'm in a lot of pain. It was like, oh, I, I hope I can still feel my legs. Um, why is my, we get a lot of pollen in Georgia. I was just, so I started slapping my legs and I could feel them. Um, so that was fine. And then it was pretty crazy trying to walk because I was on a trampoline. So I tried to walk inside and I had to, my friend had to help me, which was, um, I'm a pretty athletic guy. So for the first time in my life, not being able to walk like that was pretty crazy. It would happen to me, so I don't want to do a backflip. Yeah, if you're going to do backflips, have a coach there, is all I'm going to say. 
you want to have like an actual gymnastics coach, not just like, you don't want to just go into your backyard and do backflips. It's extremely dangerous. Okay, cool. Mm, so I think that's, I think that's pretty much everything. So let's see if it's project controller access onto project controller access onto uh, onto silk strand add force in that direction okay cool so what's the quickest way still never tried it Sam I've seen people learn on on mattresses and stuff yeah even a mattress I'm telling you you want it you want a coach you don't want to do it by yourself let's see okay cool so that should be it and in a perfect world where you code things and everything just works magically that would be it but that's not how the world works normally so we're gonna check it out and we're gonna see if uh, it actually works as we intended and I guess I'm just gonna straight go for it Okay, where would I do this? Let me see. Maybe down. Okay, so we got a null reference exception. Okay, so for some reason that broke it. So what I'm gonna do instead is do new list silk node up here. That's what we had before and I'm just gonna make it public. And then hopefully I just don't add anything to it anywhere. One and wait till the three, but how is... The, qu the two is pretty good actually, Chicky. I enjoy it personally. Uh, it's way lighter. Really, that's the only reason to enjoy it. It's cheaper and it's lighter. Like, that Quest 1 is pretty heavy on your head. The Quest 2 is not really... You could wear it for a while. I do agree, you probably don't need to grab it right now. Okay, so there's that. I mean, eh. Let's see if we can do better with that. I need to... Yeah. Okay, cool. So we throw it on. Okay, so it's not working at all. Let's say that. But at least it's not breaking anything else. So let's see. Let's see why we went wrong. So now we need to start logging things. There are rumors, yes, you're the next. Um, they're making a Quest Pro. They're not making a 3 right now. So it'll probably come out next year. Uh, let's take a look here. So let's see where the code fails. Basically, let's put it in here. Okay, I'm pretty confident in this one, so I'm not going to test this. But let's see in here. Grabbing silk. Okay, so if that debugs, we'll know that we're grabbing the silk. Is there anything else? I guess we're going to attempt wall grab. Silk was grabbed. And 
I guess we can even output the soak direction. All right, cool. Yeah, it'll it'll be an Oculus Quest 2 Pro. The I think the VP of um, Quest already said it, or he said like they were like, "Are you gonna make a Pro?" And he said, "That would be really interesting," and, and like winked at him. So. Okay, so first of all, very cool. Let's shoot this. Let's, yeah, stick it to the wall there. Climb over here. Yeah. Oh, I'm sitting too close to my computer. All right, so let's see. Okay, cool. So it's not actually, there's something wrong with the, this part of it, because it did not say the silk was grabbed. Which I have to say is actually pretty surprising. Somehow the world will change for me. I see. I see, interesting. What Unity version am I using? I'm using 20... 20.2... 20.2.6 f1 I just try to basically use whatever this newest stable version is sometimes that's not quite the move but for me it is because um, things change so quickly in unity that when I make a game a month it's easier to just go to the new one so I can always keep up with it so basically the bug so when people say there's a bug in the code they don't mean like the code is broken they mean that their logic was incorrect so if you look here, I'm basically doing check wall, and if you recall, I had a building layer and a silk layer because I wanted to check if they hit a building or if they hit the silk, or if they grabbed the building or grabbed the silk. I wanted to put precedence for the building. So basically, I had this boolean, which is a true or false, and then I said it's false, and then I said it's true if they hit silk, and I set the layer hit to 14. I then say, okay, it's also true if it hits the building, but then I say hit some if you hit something, set it the layer to six. This is basically assuming that it's false before this. Because this returns true when I hit silk, it's gonna set hit something to true. So even if I don't hit anything here with the building, it's still gonna set hit something. Um, and this is gonna get set to six. So basically I'm grabbing silk and it's telling me that I'm grabbing a building. So that's that bug there. And if you guys have any more questions about that, let me know. But let's see. So basically, I just need to not assume that. Bool building hit equals this. And then down here. So hit something will still be the same. Except here, I'm going to do building hit. And I'll probably, just to keep consistency, do the same here. Silk hit. And I'll give this the silk layer. And I'm going to do a silk hit. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, that's correct. Cool. And now any number of things that I add to this, let's say you can grab other things later, like a car or something, um, this will still work. So that's good. Although it is a little confusing looking, I realize. So let's break this up. Let's say silk. And building. Okay, so that should solve some of our problems. Let's see if it solves all of them. There's some world out there where I become a perfect developer and I never make mistakes. 
And I think that world, honestly, would probably involve having a bunch of people watching me as I code and telling me that I just made a mistake. Which I think will be a nice side effect of streaming yourself making games. The reason people don't really stream themselves making things, I think, is it's kind of like a weirdly personal experience, I'd say. I don't know. Not for me, but for most people I'd say it is. Okay, cool. So let's see where we're at now. Okay, so it's currently saying that we're grabbing silk. So that's good. We got all the way to that part. But... It's not doing anything. Silk was grabbed. We know we got past that. And then we're down here. And grabbing silk is being called. Let's just go ahead and print these out. Because those are the things we're relying on. And clearly something is wrong here. So one of these values must be wrong. Alright, let's run this one more time so that we can see. And who in, I'll ask again, who in here has some coding experience? Does anybody? I'm curious. Because people are afraid of programming, um, but it's actually pretty easy. Once you wrap your mind around it, I'm not going to say it's crazy easy up front, but... Um, give me a second, I actually just realized the walking... Oh, a Thought Drifter's here. Out of curiosity, what other language does do I know? Okay, fifth grade robotics, and I do. I'm glad you're here, Thought Drifter. You see the TikTok went pretty well. I don't know if you see me on that. Um, fifth grade robotics does count. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about, too, actually. Those little, like, yellow robots. Let's see. And then I know... What do I know? Let me just write them out. I know JavaScript... I know Node.js, which is pretty much just JavaScript. I know... Actually, it, it is just JavaScript. Python, I know C Sharp, I know Java, I know a little bit of C++, enough to get by. I know... I think that might be it. Because I'm a back-end programmer. Oh, and then uh, Dart. Because I can do mobile. I can do games, I can do AI stuff, and I can do server stuff. So that would be all the things I learned there. Okay, so I bias these. Walk bias. So I actually think I need to go in the player for this. Basically, the player, it's too hard to walk I need this to be a little bit lower I need this to be like 0 0.2 maybe 0 0.24 uh, wow where did you learn all those languages we have okay give me one second guys let me check this out and I'll explain to you guys what a bias function is in a second. It's very important in game development to know your curves, and I'll explain that. Okay, so you fall a little bit, you spawn. Okay, that's better. Okay, I do a bit of C sharp on the front end, very little on the back end, most some Lua. I actually heard a lot about Lua, but I actually really don't have any idea what it is. Um, Python only, very cool, Lucas. Are you using that for AI stuff or are you using it for like uh, scripting and whatnot? Uh, Senefer, hey Senefer, thank you for joining. And a bit of ro robots. I'm actually not familiar with robots. 
That sounds like something you would use to program robots, though. We had to build robots so we could make different functions through a tablet. We also had to automate it to make through a path. That's cool. Was it following, yeah, so it was following like a black line or something? Where did you learn all those languages? I will say that in a second. I uh, Gaming, that uh, was a long time ago. Where did, the same thing, I know, right? Yeah, what's going on? yeah, so I learned all those languages through projects. Basically, you'll realize that computer science is extremely mind-numbingly boring if you were not doing, <laughs> if you were not using it to make a project. So, like, if you're, like, because when you first start learning programming, they're going to be, like, they're going to be like, okay, you are trying to make a rectangle. So you're going to make a function and it's going to be called get area. And you're going to pass in a number and it's going to be the width. And then you're going to pass in another number and it's going to be the height. And then in that function, you're going to return width times height, the classical formula for how to get the area of a rectangle. And you're kind of like, all right, that's cool. Like I'm learning computer science, but I'm not really having that fun doing it. Um, so the reason I learned all those languages is because I came up with a bunch of projects I wanted to do. And those projects required me to learn those languages. And that's basically what your life of computer science will be. Choose your own story and I'm trying to make it, but it didn't work. Oh, okay, Lucas. So you were the one who was telling me about the choose your own story. I'm glad you, I'm glad you're here. Glad you joined. Okay, so I fixed, oh yeah, and then I was going to explain. So here's a good resource for you guys, and that's also going to help me explain it. Graph toy. So basically, it's important in games to know your functions. There is game, there is math in games, it's not very complicated though, so it's not too bad. But basically, if we change this, if you guys have done graphing yet, basically this is just zero negative one to one and this is negative one to one and if for this one we just put y equals x it's going to give us this line and so basically i had their walk movement imagine this as the analog stick and as they moved it it was adding that amount of fourth force to them so if they moved it further away if they moved it a lot it was going to add a lot of force if they moved it a little bit it was going to add a little bit of force but i was realizing that it was really hard to actually walk like only an inch because it would add too much force. The response was too high. So this was what we would call a linear response. Basically, if you move an extra inch, you get an extra inch of output. What I opted for was basically something like this, where now, instead of a linear response, it's no longer give, it, give an inch, get an inch. It's give an inch, get like 0.2 inches in the beginning, and at the end, give an inch and get like 1.2 inches. Um, it's kind of what I'm saying. So you see here in this area, if you move it just slightly, you'll walk just a little bit, but I didn't have that quite right. So I was just doing it again. Oh, but this is called graph tour. It's really awesome. It's really fun. But let's check out what the silk strand is. Well, good to have you here, Lucas. Always fun to talk to a fellow game developer. And let's get that bad boy on the wall. <sighs> okay, so now it's a little... No! No! Oh, no. Okay, cool. So I got it. Let's see what it's saying. Okay, so it does get a silk strand, it's giving us zero. So that makes sense now because the silk, the direction is just zero. Okay, so let's figure out why it's zero. You would be an amazing teacher, you explain so so in depth and answer any questions we have. Yeah, I actually, I like teaching a lot, I'll say. I, I do think I used to be a little bit better at it than I am now, but um, I'm glad to hear that you are enjoying my explanations. Um, let's see. Yeah, and I like answering questions anyway. A book you might like, Dom, The Nature of Code. I haven't read it yet, but it was recommended by someone who knows his stuff and I trust his judgment. All right, let's check it out. The Nature of Code. I really thought that was going to be The Nature of Code. What is, where's like the summary? What's going on here?
Nature of code. Simulating that. Oh, that sounds good. Actually, that sounds pretty cool. Emerging properties of nature and software. How can understanding mathematics benefit a digital worlds? Yeah, so this is basically what I was talking about. If I don't know if you guys saw the TikTok where I was explaining games, but it turns out that mathematics is very good at simulating real phenomenon that happen in the world, like uh, thermodynamics or like the way your sun reflects off your face, things like that, or the way like water moves. Um, so if you can code those things, you can make those simulations in a digital world. And so it looks like this book is talking about that. That's actually pretty cool. That does seem sweet. Okay. So this is zero. Where am I all using this? Mm. I know you see. So we'll probably actually set this to zero here. Oh my goodness. This is such a classic. Look at this. So I have a list of silk nodes that make up a, a silk strand. I grab the first one and then look what I grab over here. I grab the first one again. So dumb. I'm a freaking idiot. Okay, cool. So let's get that. And now that should be good. Okay, and then finally here, this should work fairly well. Everything else seemed to be fine. Let's just go ahead and debug it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys, this game is extremely fun. It's not extremely polished or featureful, but the mechanics are very fun. And you're not supposed to play it for more than a few hours anyway. I just basically wanted to, because I just always wanted to play something like this, and nobody was making, and nobody was making it, so I was like, all right, fine, I'll make it then. If you're going to force my hand with it. And that's the beauty of game development is you basically get to take whatever dream you have and make it come to life. Yeah. Okay. All right, moment of truth on this one. Oh, I bashed my head on the wall. Oh, that was kind of disorienting actually. I want to go up there. Oh no, I messed up. Okay, cool. When it is done, will you do updates? I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I certainly understand that it's possible it will be popular enough that it would be beneficial for me to do updates and put out like more content on it and that people would like it. I. I, I think I probably wind up doing that, but I don't want to. I like to, I have a lot of game ideas, like a lot. Because the VR is really underexplored right now. People basically have done pretty much nothing with it. So for me, um, I want to get to all these things before other people do. Like everybody's just making shooters. I don't know. I don't want to play a shooter. Of the attack on quest game, on side quest a fan of. Yeah, Attack on Attack on Titan always makes for a great game. How do I do that, Senefer? Okay, cool. So in the end, all the mathematics was completely correct. The only thing that was not correct was my logic. So that's good. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And then so now we basically need... Okay, we need climb properties climb parameters and in here we're going to need to do a public float um,
I guess zip speed. Zip force? What am I trying to do here? The zip force. Okay, cool. And then we'll do climb params dot zip force. And then if we go to our project, join Discord, link in the description and contact on. Thank you, Thought Drifter. That is exactly correct. Yeah, we have like 25 playtesters now. Also, there's only 100 spots for playtesters, so get it while it get it while it's hot or else you won't be able to get in. Eventually, I'll probably do some sort of lottery, but for right now, it's whatever. Okay, so we go to scriptable objects. Go to scriptable objects. Boom. Climbing params and let's make this. All right, so 500 was way too much, way way too much. So, let's make it 50. Let's even make it just 20 right now. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's say we wanna go up there. We'll drop that. Give it the old grep. Dang it. It's so hard. Yeah. Okay, and you can see if I point it at it and I go backwards, it works. If I point to the right and go backwards and forwards. I don't get a lot of speed out of it, but if I go left and right, I get speed. Um, and that's basically what I was talking about. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. And that works nicely. So that's good. Although it does appear. It does appear to be kind of strange. This is so funny. And I think you sh too bad you can't do something like this. Oh. Oh, I see. It's because I was swinging. Yeah, and that's generally where the bugs come from. I wouldn't even say that was a bug. I think I do want to put precedence on swinging over... I think I do want to put precedence on swinging. Uh-oh. Just kind of floating and I don't really know why. Eh, it's not game breaking at least. Okay, so I guess this would be a pretty quick way to climb a building. Okay, very cool. I damn Dom asking about it. Yeah, Senefer, um, I'll get back to you on that for sure. I probably, I mean, you see, I have a... I have a bunch of stuff to take care of. So I just got to figure that out. Okay. Do you have any favorite app lab games? Do I have any favorite app lab games? Yeah, I have actually not been, you know, for a VR developer, you'd be surprised that I actually don't play all that much VR. This one was really good. Other than that, I haven't really played. But I can tell you that I'm amazed that this one they did not let on the Oculus store because this one is clearly a very well made game. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they're being mean about that. So whatever. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's cool. 
we, from there, it did perhaps produce a few bugs. I'm not too worried about that right now. I can probably fix this later, and then nothing that's going to ruin the game. Actually, you know what? I'm not exactly happy with the way it behaves. I got it when it was on side quests. Yeah, it's just clearly a very good game, Lucas. It's awesome. So I'm not exactly happy with the way that it behaves. I... So walk movement controls itself. Oh, you know what? I need to multiply it by time dot delta time, first of all. The reason you multiply it by that is because The reason you multiply it by that is because every frame is actually a little bit different, like in the amount of time it takes to render it. Some frames take 11 milliseconds, some take 13. So if I'm just adding a constant amount of force every frame, it won't really, um, it will end up, it basically just ends up making the force a little different because of the frame timing. I actually am not sure I understand it fully enough to explain to you guys why, unfortunately. Let's make that 200 then. And I think that, I basically just don't like that you can go infinitely fast. So I'm almost thinking that I could diminish it by Hmm, I'll think about that later. I won't make you guys watch me do that. How many people can you play with at a time in Gorilla Tag? Um, and I may add updates. I'm not sure yet. Mr. Avocado. Okay, let's see if 20 was a good amount. Now that we're multiplying by the time frame. It was not, it's too slow. Oh, weird. Okay, sorry. Um, so when you slide along it, it still makes the rock sound. Oh no, why did I quit out? That was so dumb. My bad. The whole reason you make it something like this is so that you can change it while the game is going. And I goofed. You get the axis, you project it onto the world. Okay. Sorry it took me so long to come back. Turns out my mom wanted me to take my little sister to a friend's house. No worries, CS. Or I'll call you Fox. No worries, Fox. That's totally fine. Everybody's got stuff to do. Okay, so I take that and I drop it and I grab it okay very cool actually you know what you can do this is gonna be cool eh. Eh, a little bit higher Okay, so if I lift this up, so this is actually kind of a bug in the game, but it will stick like that, so then I guess you can just kind of grab. No, why isn't it, uh, why can't I grab it? Hmm.
Huh. Let me take a look at this. Let me think, there's some bug here. Basically, it's not putting, I think it's saying, there's some bug here and it's, I think, ruining this whole thing. And it's when I put the strands together and then release them. When are you going to add me? I'm gonna go now, but I'll be back later. Alright, see you, Senefer. Um, I'm gonna, I guess, add everybody, like, later tonight, Fox. Sorry, I'm just trying to get some stuff done. Let me see if I can reproduce this bug. Alright, see you, Senefer. Let me see if I can reproduce this bug where basically it's not letting me. Alright, I shoot these two guys, I put them together. Does that ruin my gravity? It does not. Alright, let's climb back up there. Then I try to grab them. It doesn't work, is my gravity now ruined? Yes it is. Okay, cool, so that's the bug. That's how you reproduce it. I just DM'd you, so become a game tester. Okay, bye. I'll send it for... Okay, and it's giving me the wrong code line for this. Don't know why it's telling me that it's here. Clearly it's not. It's an index out of bounds. So it's clearly this guy. The silk nodes... I suppose the silk nodes on something that silk strand secondary secondary latch is basically what it uses when secondary latch is what it uses when I connect it into the air for latching the point in air after strand dropped the strand drop, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Add this capsule collider. So the capsule collider should be there, but I suppose the problem is that the other node is not. Right, let's see what we do with this latch position. Oh, come on. Okay, cool. So it looks like all we really need to do is add a silk node. And let's see. So when I drop it, add the last node. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's come back. 
Let's, yeah, so now we're getting into some hardcore coding here. Do you have an age requirement for testing? I do not, no. How would I appreciate the, except the playtesting invite, would it be through email? Um, it's going to go to your email. It's going to go to your email, Fox, so you'll be able to do it there. Send hand to null. Add the fixed node. End node, lead node pref, and transform position. We're actually going to put this in at the latch position. And we're not going to change any of that, so we don't need that. But we do need to add silk node. Okay, and let's see what happens now. And be so wonderful. So peak of the memories of our nation. I got iCarly stuck in my head. I don't know if don't know if you guys watch iCarly. Pretty sweet. Alright, let's see. Shoot these. Put them together. Hey. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, so I guess I don't necessarily need to instantiate. Equals new game object. Then let's do end node. End node dot transform dot position equals latch position and node dot parent equals basically just doing the same things I was doing except and now I'm doing it oh no what was it transform Okay, cool. So that should be good now. Oh, your sister watches iCarly all the time. It's, I, I mean, they just put it back on Netflix. I haven't been watching it, but it just really spurred my memories back when they were like, oh my God, they were the OG streamers. And nobody knew. Nobody even knew that was going to be a good idea, except I Carly. She was way before her time. Woo! Okay, cool. Okay, so now we should be good. Now everything should be working nicely. Yeah, so if I... Eh, there's VR is so funny because there's so many... Oh, man, I didn't think I hit it. Because there's so many skill-based activities that you just don't find in other games. Okay, so I'll put this bad boy here, I shoot this here, I tie a little knot, you know, and then I grab it, knot. Dang it. And then we're off. Yay! I am the silkworm. Ha! Oh, dang it.
Oh, so close to being cool. Shoop. Oh my god, this is so funny. It's like an elevator. <laughs> Wee! That's hilarious. Okay, cool. Um... I don't... That's okay, let's just do a hotfix here. When I say hotfix, I mean something that is not how you should code something, but I do it that way anyway, just because I want it to be fixed. All right, and let's do one more testing round to see if we get any more bugs. These red things down here, those are bugs. You don't want those. I have to do in particular except for tell you about as many bugs as a play tester. Um, really, I'm just giving it to you guys to play test to have fun with it. You also can tell me about bugs. Yeah, that would be extremely helpful. But no, you don't have to do anything. Why is that not working? Okay, cool. Okay, let's see. Okay, very cool. And now we basically have a situation where it also, when you release from basically zip lining, it it throws you, I should say, like adds to your speed. And that's because in here, when you let go, grabbing side of building, throw up. Okay, and that's because it's using their velocity in world space. And so now that we're move, now that we can move while we're climbing, we can slide along that uh, silk. Um, it's basically saying that you're throwing your because you if you're climbing a wall, the harder you throw your hand, the further up the wall you're going to be flung. So now it's basically saying like, oh, their hand is moving really really fast because you're just moving fast on a zip line so it's just throwing you really hard whereas it should be saying like okay well their hands not moving at all actually so let's see do I have any ideas for my next game I do except tell you any bugs and I'll probably do a vote on TikTok I'll probably do some sort of comment vote to pick the next one but I think I'm gonna do probably power up simulator which will basically be if you guys have ever watched Dragon Ball Z, it'll be <laughs> not even a game. It's just going to be an experience where basically you just scream as loud as you can and it powers you up. So the ground will start shaking and then like the trees will start swaying and a thunderstorm will roll in and start cracking lightning. And you'll be like, ah, ah, which sounds really dumb, but it's actually pretty fun. You can do a poll on TikTok built right into a sticker. Okay, I'll have to look into how to do that, Fox. Okay, cool. So if we look at this, it's used pretty much all over the place.
I don't think I changed any of those things around, so let's go ahead and just change this back to get the average velocity local. Cool. And then basically we're going to need to transform that into world space the same way we did before. So we'll say dir equals, um, what would it be? Hand climb dot, what is it? I must have the hand somewhere. Hand. Hand dot transform dot parent dot transform direction. Dir. And that should transform that into world space. Now let's see if that works. When is it going to be released or finished? It should be finished in the next few days. Uh, it's random, YouTube. Yeah, but about six weeks for App Lab, probably. So playtesters can get it in a few days, and you can do that by joining the Discord, and then um, everyone else will get to play it in like six weeks or so. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so that still works nicely. Okay, that does not work nicely. Okay, so it's broken. So now when I throw off the wall, it's throwing in the wrong direction. So let's take a look at it real quick. Let's take a look at the player. The camera offset, the hands, spy. I think left hand controller is where the hand script is, so that's what I was accessing. And it should, that should be correct. I get the parent of that and I transform its local velocity based on that. So that should be correct. Let's take a look at it though. Because this basically should be exactly what this is except without the... Okay, and this I'm just getting an average velocity. Oh, of the player, of the player. I see. It's not of their hand, it's of the player. So that's why that's wrong. Body relative to hand velocity. Uh, no problem, Chicky. Multiplayer, you were saying that you would create a framework that would easily be implemented into other games for Dragon Ball Z idea. Would that be another framework? The Dragon Ball Z idea would not be another framework. It would itself just be a game. When I say a framework, I mean like a set of code, like this code here, and these are files. So I would make basically like six files, and those files would handle multiplayer for me in some way that's generic enough that other any game can use it and not have to worry about what type of game it is. So it would just be like, I basically write all this code that I don't really get to see that when I'm trying to make something multiplayer, I'd basically just say like, hey, um, connect a friend and it would connect on the back end and then now we'd be connected. And so then in any game, I can just say connect a friend, connect a friend, connect a friend. But I don't have that yet. I need to make it. Transform root. Transform dot root dot transform. Direction.
Sorry guys, let me think about this for a second. I'm just trying to figure out where this went wrong, if these values are correct. Body relative to hand velocity. What was I trying to say here? Body relative to hand velocity. Add from the body's point of view, the displacement. The displacement is transform.parent. So this is a world space displacement. I actually don't know that it's possible for me to get the player's local velocity. So perhaps let's just not worry about it for right now. I'll just write it down on my bugs list and then we'll move on. Um, World space usage, go back to climb, go to, um, uh, what was it? S silk, not that. Let go, go back to let go. We'll change this back to this, we'll get rid of these. <coughs> Average player velocity. And then I suppose we just first of all let's get rid of these because we're no longer using that. And then in here we'll say if for now until we fix it. Let's do this actually. It's a little bit of a cleaner implementation. So I'm basically saying if you grab silk, don't add that extra velocity to the player after they release because it is unnecessary. And that honestly should be good enough and perhaps that's even the perhaps that's even the type of functionality that we would want. Okay, and let's test this out. It's probably the best and easiest. I've wanted to create a VR game. Is this the best software or is there an easier one? Any kids who... Any kids who watch your stream will get slapped with a belt for the Dragon Ball Z game because of their screaming. I wanted to... I think it would be so funny, though, to just, like, get videos of people playing that game and just have them be like... Because ah! I'm gonna make... I'm gonna make you scream loud. Like, you're not gonna be allowed to play unless you're screaming loud. And I don't care if nobody even plays it. But if you're coming in and trying to think like, oh, I'll, I'll be able to power up if I just kind of, uh, no. I'm going to make you scream at the top of your lungs. You ever had the function to do flips when you're... Um, I actually considered the flips, and I do agree Unity is the easiest. I actually considered the flips option back a while ago, but I opted out of it because it is A, complicated, and B, would make you way, way too sick. I think I tried it at one point and just realized, like, oh, no, this is terrible. What am I doing here? I'm connecting these. I'm lifting myself up. I'm sliding. Okay, it seemed like it actually still... Oh, okay, that's why. I, my logic was incorrect. 
Is it on App Lab? Hey, hey, Afrog. It is not currently on App Lab. It should be in about six weeks. If you want to be a playtester, join the Discord and DM me. Or check the text channels for the games and people will tell you how to do it. Um, I will make my household hate me for playing it. Yeah, but then you let them play it and they'll realize how cool it is and why you were doing it. Okay, so this isn't... It needs to be if it equals six. Not if it's anything but six, because again, six was the... And you know what, let's go ahead and like refactor this. Because this is a little, let's go into internal and let's do const int, const means it can't be changed. So constant number m m building layer m silk layer so this equals 14 and this one equals 6 cool now we'll find all the 6's and we will change them to m building layer so now, and the reason you do this is because it's clearer. So if you look at this now, if statements basically to say, if this thing is true, do what's in this bracket. And if it's not true, don't do it. And so now it's saying, if the layer that you grabbed equals the building layer. Before it just said six, that was a little confusing. Now it's clear that I'm saying, if you're grabbing the building, do this. And then we need to find all the 14s. M silk layer, uh, silk layer. Let's find the next 14. M silk layer. Let's find the next 14. Cool. Okay, so that should be good. Let's test it one more time though. 213. Hey man, how are you? J Mon, is this game gonna be on Quest 2? Me while playing Dragon Ball Z game. The family would enjoy literally nobody me will find. <laughs> Let's see. Just joined, how's it going? It's going very good actually. I don't know. There were a bunch of people who wanted a zip line too, so I made it. And I'll show you that in a second. I was just fixing something here. Wait a second. This might actually be a problem. Okay, so now you can now you can do a little zipline action, which is fun. Eh, eh, eh. Which is also fun because you can use it as like an elevator. Come on. And it's just an easy way to get around to buildings. This is like the number one way to get around the city. Okay, very cool. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> it is surprisingly fun. Okay, cool. But nothing would be complete without some sound effects. So let's see if we can get that. You don't think Oculus will approve the screaming game? Why not? As long as it runs at frame rate, they don't care what the game is. My last game I got approved wasn't even a game. It was literally just like an environment you stand in. So excited. Will this game have any objectives or plot? Because Silkman is extremely interesting. No, so I'll show you guys. Um, it's called Grove. It was actually not a game. It was a mental health application in which you could go to support groups in VR. So during COVID, people couldn't go to their support groups. You, um, I don't think we have a ton of older kids, so probably not something you guys are familiar with yet, but adults will have various mental health problems. I guess kids have them too, but anyway, so like if you were an alcoholic and you went to Alcoholics Anonymous, you couldn't do that during COVID. So I made an application where you could do it in VR. Um, 
Oh. Ah. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you the games. So that's what I made last time. So you have this game, it starts, it points you in a direction. And you try to get there. But it's actually pretty hard. I don't think I'm gonna make it actually. Oh. Alright, I have eight seconds and I'm in. Okay, cool. Okay. And then you basically just go until you can't do it anymore. Which is normally... I don't know when that would be, actually. I haven't... Ah. So this one should be pretty easy to get. And this is where the city ends. So I need to... This is some stuff I'll need to do later, but I won't worry you guys with it. But yeah, so that's really the only game in there. For my email, it has not responded. You have not gotten around to it. It's fine if you haven't. No, I totally, I haven't gotten around to it too. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try to always add people within the day. But I was really busy today with all the TikTok stuff. So, yeah, like there's not going to, it's going to send right to your, it's going to send it right to your inbox. So you'll know when you get it. It's not going to like go to spam or anything. So just hold off until you get it. Okay, cool. So now we need some sort of zip line sound effect. So the, normally the first thing I'll check is YouTube audio library which is a great resource for a bunch of copyright free stuff. Okay. Okay, and if that doesn't work, I'll normally just go to YouTube and look for some copyright free stuff. Okay, um, fishing line pulled out sound effect I imagine this is what I'm going to be looking for maybe I'm remembering these sounds wrong in my head good ones there. That could work. Let me see what zipline sound effects sound like. Tied to I uh, maybe fishing reels aren't the right sound. Yeah, I mean it just takes a little bit. Zipline, but you'd be surprised what works when you just put it in there. Like a lot of the sounds I have in the game are not really um, what you would expect them to be. Mm, no, those are Fortnite sounds. So that works. The problem is the pitch changes over. About right here it starts working. Uh, 
I wouldn't know how to equalize that pitch. I'm sure there's a way to like bring the pitch down in later parts of the video. But I'm not really sure how to do that. Although I guess I could do it programmatically in Unity. But that seems like a lot of work unnecessarily. Is that it? Okay. Oh, a zipper noise. We can look into zipper noises. Okay, was one of those... Was one of those supposed to be the sound effect? <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, let's duplicate this. Actually, that does sound pretty good. Yeah, I need a long I need a longer one. Yeah, you're right, Fox. All right, you're right. I'll give it to you. These are all fairly short. I wonder if I can get... That's really disconcerting. Hmm. The ultimate compilation of zippers. That's funny. So I think it would, I think what I'll probably have to do if I'm going to do that, is there an app where you can slow it down? Uh, I certainly can slow it down. It will affect the pitch of it is the problem. You could try and loop the sound. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm not the guy who cares about credit. I said first, but I'm not the guy who cares about. Oh, you said it first, Mr. Avocado. And Fox was trying to steal your thunder. Fox. There was one in here, maybe around here. No, it was earlier than that. I feel like this one. Cause it's like, I feel like it could be like, I feel like it could kind of hit that second part over and over again, if I can get it right. As if like the wheel you're using, is there a sound effect that's not a, that would make sense that's not a zip line in general that maybe we could find something longer of like, uh, Like what would a what would a silkworm sound like as they're sliding along? Get, help me out with this, guys. What 
if we're not going to do like a zipper or something like that, which we very well still could, what would a silkworm sound like as they were sliding along silk? I guess the only thing I can think of is kind of like a grosser, wetter sounding thing. It could even just be like a low hum, as long as I'm making some sort of sound. I wonder if honestly, if I can just play like this silly string sound I have. I think as long as it's like a consistent, a consistent whatever, that it would sound pretty good. Where was this? Like I almost feel like that could work right there. Certainly that first part. Slime ripping, ripping maybe fabric. I'll look up fabric ripping. I feel like I, I feel pretty good about this, but let's check out fabric ripping. I'm not quite sure what it is you're envisioning yet, but let's see what. Let's see what they come up with. And I won't need any of those because. You're just sliding down the zip line. It's like, <laughs> just over and over again. You're like, what the heck is happening here? It sounds great, it sounds mechanical. I guess that one wasn't too bad, actually. Okay, I don't think it's quite, I don't think it's quite as good as the other one. And then slime sound effect. Not sure what that would be, but let's check it out. Slimy sound effects. Sounds are free, very cool. That's not bad, actually. Can you guys hear that? I almost feel like that sound makes sense. I don't know if you guys can hear that. The, um, the like, is it too gross sounding? We'll keep it in mind. No. That's what I'll play, just gross mouth sounds. All right, enough of that. Oh my God. I think this might probably be the most realistic sound it would be, but I'm not going to subject my game, my players to that sound. Alright, alright, enough of that. I do consider that, uh... Like a tape sound, so a tape. Let's, let's look a little deeper into this bugs crawling sound effect. And then I see you guys are saying duct tape or cello tape. Oh my god, I hate, why did they put pictures of bugs? I don't like all the pictures. Okay, that was pretty disturbing.
Okay, let's hop out of the bugs and let's check out sellotape and then we'll probably just move forward with the... I'm not even sure what sellotape is. Oh. Uh... It's a little too harsh, maybe. Dang it, I don't know how to... Let me check that out. V equals Y3 M T Q C Y S D D C. That could be good. Okay, I like that one. I like that one thought. Let's see. So between those two, that'll be out. Probably don't need sellotape. Hey, Senefer, we are currently picking out an audio effect for the game. And we're trying to decide between this pre-existing one. I guess I, 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 at this point, I'm trying to decide between this. All right, enough of that. Is there a longer one in here, Thought Drifter? Do you know? Yeah, you're right. It's just those beginning two, I think. Okay. It's got a free download thing. Feel free to use MP3 converter. Sounds good to me. MP3. YouTube to MP3. It should be noted, you probably don't want to use MP3s in games. Um, but I've never been enough of an audiophile to know the difference. So, technically they're not very good. Alright, get ready to watch me try to audio edit, which is probably my worst skill in video games. That's okay, Thought Drifter. I think we can come up with something here that would, should work pretty good, and if we can't, we can always fall back on that other sound. So, that's good. Slide. Okay, then we come over here. We... Audio... Oof, what would it be called? Climb. I guess in climb, we'll do... Um import new assets and we'll go to downloads and we'll do slide and we'll do this oh wait never mind we're not doing that yet we need to open up audacity i need a better audio editing program actually you know what i have premiere i have um audition so i don't know why i'm using audacity actually now that i'm thinking about it but i won't learn audition on stream i'll I'll wait, because I kind I kind of know how to use. I kind of know how to use Audacity. So let's see here. Let's zoom in. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay, I think we can take this part here and do some sort of like crossfade. Maybe that will be good enough. Let's 
It's not quite working. Okay, let's see if we can take this first part here. Effect, uh, change pitch. Oh, you know, it's it's currently an A sharp, a B flat, and I'm thinking we want it to be more of a... Oh, yeah, I don't know what's happening. 10%. Thirty percent. Okay, I was a little bit wrong with this. I don't know if there's like a compare pitch. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the pitch as close as possible. I don't even remember where I, what I just clicked. Change pitch. I'm trying to get the pitch as close as possible to this other one. That way the transition is as soft as possible. Yeah, no, the fabric ripping was just a little too crazy, I think. Okay, and then this, maybe we just do. There we go, perfect. Okay, so now we have at least two seconds of slide. So let's get rid of these parts here. Not quite, unfortunately. Let's think. We could probably do the same thing here that we just did. So this one's actually a little bit lower. Maybe there's better ones. Okay, let me at least get rid of most of this excess that we're not going to use. That way I can look at them. Hopefully this is interesting for you guys. I enjoy audio editing personally. To a degree, sometimes it can be pretty horrible. But that was actually a lot of fun picking out a sound together, I think. Normally, for me, it's just kind of an arduous process. Do you think this will be done by Friday? Um, we looked at the one, yeah, uh, I think probably. I don't have anything else to do. So let's take a look at these. First of all, get rid of this little part here. Where's that extra little spike? I don't know how well you guys can hear this actually. Yeah, that's certainly true, Lucas. Uh, and it's just lagging for me. Like the stream is lagging?
change pitch, put it up by 10%. Okay. See what that gets us. Maybe this isn't even worth it for this extra like half second. I think this one we need to bring the pitch down just a little bit. That is not even close. What's the second longest we have here? Okay, let's just go ahead and grab this first part, this last part, see if we can make them work together and we'll run with that. So we don't have all the time in the world here. Let's just do a naive approach and see what happens. Are you sure you don't want me to just make all the sound effects with my mouth and send you the MP3s? Um, that could work, because you could be like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, give it a go. Give it a go and send them to me. <laughs> I'm not getting any lag, never mind, I pushed it and fixed it. Okay, good, I'm glad I fixed it, King. Cool, okay, so we got a good four and a half seconds going here. Have some nice slide, thank you for finding that for us, Thought Drifter. It was very helpful, as always. Okay, cool. And then, so I guess what I'm gonna do is take this last part here. Sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. I have to take, ugh, come on Audacity, take this part, go to the end, how do I go to the end? How does that happen? Go to the end, paste it, and crossfade these. Okay, cool. And the reason I do that is because I know that this last part now fades very nicely into this first part because I took that, took that first part, copied it. Oh wait, did I ever delete it? I don't think I did, did I? No, I... Okay, I did not do that. So we'll take that first part, we'll copy it, we'll delete it, then we will paste this next part at the end, and then we'll hit it with the old crossfade. And now, see I don't, I don't even know how to loop a track, but I think that should be good. So now we'll export that audio, we will export it to climb and we will call it um, zip line slide okay I'll be back in a minute all right see you mr. avocado see you in a minute
low working on it. Um, no, are you sure you, okay, cool. So that should be good. Now we come back over here, we take this. Huh. I think it's just loud, it's louder or something. Bring it up like three decibels. Okay, and let's export that. There's that part right there. I'm getting like too into this audio editing right now. Um, would it even make that much noise? No, it wouldn't. It will be fairly quiet. Okay, very cool. Nice to have you back, Mr. Avocado. We are currently still, again, just trying to figure this out. All right, I'm not too worried about it. Let's just go with that. Uh, la, 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 SL8R, G8R, will it be on Quest? It will in fact be on Quest. It will be on Quest 1 and it'll be on Quest 2. So if you have either of those, you'll be good to go. It will be on App Lab. Okay, very cool. So now we need to basically go to our scriptable objects. We need to go into climbing and we need to make a new one of the, oh, never mind, not scriptable objects, audio. And we'll need to basically duplicate that and we'll need to rename this one zip line audio and we will need to take this and give it zip line slide it will spatialize it will loop it will not play on awake its pitch will be one its spatial blend will be one and its volume will be one so that should be good i'm basically just setting up an audio um, file Yeah, no, it should be good. So hopefully you have one of those SL8. And if you want to stick around and watch the game be made, you're free to do that as well. Currently we're working on the zip lining audio effect. So we made the audio effect, we made the zip lining, and now we just need to uh, make it happen. Let's see here. So then I need a script. And we'll go into audio at Foley, and we will call it zip line sound effect and I guess we will pretty much just make so we have these we have this player let's just bring him out here for a second let's bring him out here let's open him up Climbing helpers, player audio effects. Okay, and then we have these. So we can just copy these, paste them, and we'll call this. Right zip line sound effect. Cool. We'll call this left. 
zipline sound effect. For a lot of these sound effects, I just have one for each hand, like an audio source, like something that plays audio. I have one for each hand because um, you can do both of them at the same time. That's not really the case for zipline, but it'll probably be easier to write the script if I just go ahead and um, make it for both hands like I am here. Okay, cool, so zipline sound effect. Sound effect, sorry, not sound effect. Um, let's, let's do like, This one. This should be a good starting point. Okay, and then we'll go into zipline. It would be cool if the player could add stuff and have a camera, like blocks and stuff. Yeah, I think that would be one way to go with it, the sort of creationist gameplay. I don't think... Alright, and see you later, 2.13. Um, I don't think it would quite work out here let's see oh well i just don't have time i have to make it and i have to finish it up in like three days here zipline sound effect okay we'll take this and we'll plug it in and then okay so slide clip sounds good climb sounds good really just going to be the one audio source and its volume will be the player velocity that sounds good okay it'll be something like that and then its position will be climb transform position okay very cool there's only going to be one audio source We're just going to call it a source instead. Audio source dot loop equals is sliding. Um, so loop is more. That's not quite right, Thought Drifter, but your head is in the right space. It'll definitely be something like that. It's basically just going to be. I'm going to need two events, one for when you start doing it, when you start sliding, and another for when you've stopped. Um, although designating when those events happen will be a little bit more confusing than it normally is, but we'll see what we can get here. Okay, and we'll just in here. Let's first of all move this up. Then in here we'll do a source equals get component. A source equals get component um, audio source. We'll just have those pre existing in the scene. Let's actually go back before I forget. Well, okay, never mind. So we'll grab that audio source so that we don't have to get it from the audio source pool. We will set it with slide clip. We will set its position to be that and. No, I suppose that's correct. It'll start at some random point in the clip and then it will play it and it will set is playing. And then it will stop it and set is playing to false and an update. It's basically going to move it along with the position. And it'll set the volume based on the speed of the player. So it will be quieter if you're moving slower along that web. Evergreen 41, imagine this game in multiplayer. Yeah, I, and I don't exactly even know what you would do with the multiplayer people, but I feel like just swinging around with them would honestly be pretty fun. Um, this game in multiplayer, how much will it cost? Yeah, it's going to be free, so no, no worries there. When do you think it'll be completed? Probably in about three days. And then from there, you can be a playtester if you're in the Discord. Or um, 
the other option is just wait six weeks for it to be approved by Quest. It's possible they're getting through because basically they released App Lab and now they have like 600 million applications to roll through. Wait. Yeah. And so that clump is probably decreasing and they'll probably start churning through them a little bit faster. When do you think it'll... Yeah, so oh, and for the people who just joined, we are currently just setting up audio for the zipline feature, which we just added today as well. So that'll be good. Okay, start audio. Okay, cool. So now we just need this, basically these two events here. Slide started and slide ended, but I don't exactly know how we're going to do that. Because we have this zip along silk. Because basically, what is the question? When does a slide start on the zip line? When does a slide start and when does it end? I suppose. This is actually surprisingly complicated trying to figure out when this slide would start. And let me show the new guys what it is that I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, anyway, so you can shoot that. Oh, okay, okay. I was wondering, there's, oh my god, that's actually kind of cool. I was confused for a second. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's two of me. So there's me over there. I have two player objects in the scene and I guess my code was so robust that it works. I wonder if I can make him like swing. No, that way. Yeah, no, go swing. Look at him go. I hope you're having fun. No, it didn't work. Okay. I guess my code wasn't that robust. But anyway, so you can put these together and then you can, oh, I think it's broken because I have two people in. Let me get that other person out. Okay, cool. So you can shoot over to that building, you can shoot another one, you can connect them, and then you can slide along it. But we need a sound effect for this, essentially. Ah! Hmm. So now we're trying to figure out when to start playing the sound effect and when to stop playing it. And you know what? No, because it's not dependent on if they're pressing, I'm using the analog stick to control it, and whether or not we're sliding is not dependent on that, because you can let go and you'll still be sliding a little bit. It's basically only dependent on if you have velocity whilst also being on, while also climbing on a... Right, let's see, this might actually be simpler than I thought. So we'll make an event, we'll call it public action. Um, zipping. What is called zipping? We have this fixed update, we could probably have a void update. And then in here, it could probably be, um, 
if basically this if all of this and No, I just had it. If all of this and you're moving. You know what? I think it'll actually fix itself. I think I can actually just do this. And then I think over in the audio, Let zipping, get rid of zipping. I'm basically trying to work towards something where every frame, it tries to set it to false. Currently zip lining. Um, bool is zipping equals false. Okay, if if zipping equals false. Actually, you know what? I was thinking I can probably just always play. No, that's what it was. That's why I needed to. Sorry, I was thinking I could just always play the audio, but it's based on your speed. Um, so you have speed on other times that aren't just when you're zipping. Um, and set is zipping. Okay, if it was false, start it. Now it's true. I'm going to get this wrong for sure. If I, if basically I'm just going to try to say like, if this, if it was false, set it equal to true. I'm losing it. It's too much programming today for me. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me see if I can write this out to get it straight in my head.
I did this with someone else, I believe. I don't remember what sound effect it was, though. Let me see if I can remember by looking. Here we go. So it's something like this. Hey, CS Fox. We're just trying to finish up this audio here, and then that will be putting us at 5 o'clock. I was having some trouble conceptualizing it, and I think I still am. But I had some other code that basically was the exact same thing, so I'm hoping if I just plug that in, it'll work, and I won't have to think too hard about this. But something tells me that's not how that's going to work out. But at least it'll be something that I can look at. At least it'll be something that I can look at. and think about. Okay, play effect. Okay, so every frame that you are actively on a silk, it's going to be saying that you should be playing the effect. And if it's not playing, then it's going to play it. And it'll set the volume and should play will be true. Then you have late update, which will set should, fall, should play to false. Okay, which basically it's just saying that like, yeah, if you're on the silk, set should play to true. And then later in the script, because it's a late update, it's going to call after this one. Set, go ahead and set it to false. Go ahead and set it to false. And if it gets around to late update again without being set to true, then go ahead and stop it. So that should be pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and Get rid of all that. Probably just get rid of all this as well. I don't know why I couldn't think that through. It was like really confusing me. All right, let's take a look here. Turn this player back on, get these. Okay, cool. And I would not recommend putting all your, I would not personally recommend putting all of your, um,
audio effect objects like on the same object as the player. I'm just doing that because I'm loading in the player and I don't want to have to deal with I don't want to have to deal with the stuff that comes or the complications that come with loading in something. So I'm just putting them all on the same object and then loading them in. Which is not very specific, but that's okay. Okay, and then this right zip line I'll give to the right hand. Okay, and then for both of them, this clip will be zipline audio. That should be pretty good. Let's go into climb. Okay, and every time that you're zipping, that will play. So let's see. I would not expect it to work, really. But maybe it will. Oh, I messed up again. I forgot to apply that and then to delete him. Waiting for it to save. All right, let's check it out. Let's go to this building. Seems good enough. We'll shoot this. We'll put them together. We'll grab this. I'm really sure what happened right there. I don't think you guys can hear it, but it is actually, it is working 100% flawlessly. Like uh, the volume changes based on your speed and it stops right as you leave. All right, very cool. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah. No, I'm going to fall off. This would be like a great way to just have a, like, move around on a network of webs. Woo! Very cool. Awesome. Okay, so that's a great way to end the stream. So we got everything we wanted in, which is basically zip lining and then fixing all the bugs and then getting the audio effect in for it. So let's go into to do and let's go ahead and get rid of, actually that's probably fixed too. Zip line using analog stick. Let's get rid of it. Awesome. Well, this was great guys. Thank you so much for the support today. It was really awesome and it was great to see all the new faces. I'm glad that TikTok brought people in and I'm glad that you find it interesting. Hopefully, you guys are on a journey to create games yourself. They're very fun. You get to take any world that you want and create it, as you've seen here. You know, there was a lot of people in the comments on the TikTok that were basically like, oh, I've been waiting forever for this game. I felt exactly the same way. The only difference was I was able to actually make it um, because I've invested in making games and being able to do this sort of thing. So I think that in itself is very powerful, very cool. Um, and hopefully you guys do as well. But. Have a good day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.